Meaning to weave in Sanskrit, the term Tantra implies a set of spiritual practices that direct the universal energies into the practitioner, thereby leading to liberation from the physical level of existence. The tools one may use in Tantric practice include things such as mantras, meditation, and mudras, which are positions of the body, especially the hands, that have some kind of influence on the subtle energies of the body or your mood. This is the real significance behind the Masonic hand gestures, which may be used as a subtle form of communication to other members, but in a more esoteric sense are employed in the harnessing and manipulation of energies, sometimes called chi, ki, orgone, prana, and vril. To put it in more practical and blunt terms, this energy is closely related to sex energy and is at the root of all mystery schools and religions. This universal energy is also referred to as light in many occult circles with very high vibratory etheric properties, also called Lucifer, which is another term for light or literally bearer of light. Alan Watts was a British philosopher who popularized Eastern esoteric philosophy for a Western audience. Born in England, he moved to the United States in 1938 where he pursued Zen training in New York and received a master's degree in theology. Watts went on to gain a large following, writing more than 25 books and articles, as well as recorded talks which still shimmer with a profound and galvanizing lucidity. The tantric sexual practice is allowing it to happen without forcing sexual relationship in any way. It, it tends to be a, a sexual type of relationship which you could call contemplative rather than active. If you see the statues of uh, tantric figures, by and large, the male figure is seated in the lotus posture, like a Buddha, like the Buddha here. The female sits right on his lap, wraps her legs round his waist and her arms round his neck. And they touch at all points, the mouth, the breasts, the sexual organs, the eyes looking straight into each other, but they're motionless. They're completely still. They don't, in other words, uh, work towards an, an orgasm. See, Freud had the idea that sexual pleasure is release from tension. That uh, what we work towards is the orgasm as detumescence, as escape from tension. But many people would disagree most strongly with this and say that's part of it, but that it is just as wonderful for there to be tension without any attempt to escape from it. Maintain the tension. Just let it happen. That is the attitude of these sexual images in the, of the sexual yoga. To let it happen and to be completely still and completely open and aware. And if you do this, you find a very strange thing happens. You will become the other person. You will experience yourselves as a single organism, where the two bodies literally melt into each other. It's as if there is electric currents or something in our bodies which ordinarily uh, bat against each other. But in this way of sexual yoga, the two currents become a single current. And it's exactly melting is the only way I could describe it, the best metaphor. The two bodies fuse. Some say that in the tantric exercise there is no orgasm. 
it is entirely what's called coitus reservatus, that, uh, or carezza, to use the Persian word. And that the sexual energy is thereby transmuted into spiritual energy. Some say, you know, you arouse the sexual energy, but instead of dissipating it, you send it up the spinal column into the brain. <clears throat> you all know, presumably, the symbolism of yoga, of the kundalini, that at the base of the spine there is the call of the, the serpent. Kundalini, the serpent power. And that the object of yoga is to send your concentrated energy down your spine to knock on that snake's head and say, wake up, man, go up the tree. And the snake wakes up and he goes slowly up the spine, energizing each chakra or center of nervous, uh, nervous telephone exchange. Each one, as he gets into it, boom, a new world is open to you. Boom, boom. Finally, he gets into the thousand-petal lotus in the head. And then everything is lit up. You know all things. And eventually, he goes out through the top of the head, where there's the sun door. The head corresponds to the firmament of heaven. The sun is the door in the firmament through which you see into the transcendental world. Sexual energy is the kundalini, is the serpent power, is the divine power. If you dissipate it in orgasm, you'll lose it. If you conserve it, you raise the power, raise the orgiastic feeling, but don't have orgasm. Instead, direct the sexual energy up the spine into the head, you'll get illumination. And many tantrics practice this way. They uh, use the intense fascination of sexual arousal to be the instrument, the incentive for intense concentration on each other. So that you look with the whole, uh, you see, supposing you look into the other partner's eyes and your interest in the other person's eyes is coupled with sexual fascination you have colossal power of concentration. You look and look and look and look and look and look into those eyes. Now, if you concentrate long enough, you go into trance, and if you know how to handle trance, you go through trance into samadhi and so on and so on. Samadhi is a state of consciousness characterized by clarity of perception and the absence of ego. It's the state of consciousness sought by all schools of meditation, a piercing of the veils of one's own subconscious mind into the superconscious. It is in this ecstatic state that the phrase, as above, so below, reveals its guarded occult meaning where an individual is said to be able to perceive or even influence events outside of himself or herself. Samuel Ayn Wyor was a spiritual teacher and author of over 60 books of esoteric spirituality. He taught and formed groups under the banner of Universal Gnosticism or simply Gnosis. Born in Bogota, Colombia, he published a book entitled The Perfect Matrimony that claim to unveil the secret of sexuality as the cornerstone of the world's great religions. That was a great initiate that uh, Master Samael Onveor knew in South America, whose name was the Dr. Arnold Krumheller, a great uh, physician, doctor from the University of Berlin. His senior name was Guiracocha. Master Samael Onveor mentioned Guiracocha in the, his book, The Perfect Matrimony. And he said, this is the mystery of Baphomet. Instead of the coitus, which reaches the orgasm, sweet caresses, amorous phrases, and delicate touching should be lavished reflectively. 
keeping the mind constantly separated from animal sexuality, sustaining the purest spirituality as if the act were a true religious ceremony. Nevertheless, the man can and should introduce the penis and keep it inside the feminine sex to bring about a divine sensation upon both, full of joy, that can last for hours, withdrawing it at the moment the orgasm is near to avoid the ejaculation of semen. The transmission of magnetic fluids is ordinarily done through the hands and through the eyes. But it is necessary to say that there is no greater and more powerful conductor, a thousand times more powerful, a thousand times superior to others than the virial member and the vulva as receptive organs. This is what Master Wiracocha said. He, in other words, were disclosing the power of Baphomet. But many people didn't understand, even though he was also clear. This is the mystery of Baphomet. This is what the Master Samael Onveo wrote in the book Igneous Rose. He says, the rose elaborates its perfume with the clay of the earth which is the physicality. The slithering worm does not like the gardener who removes its clay. Our disciples will now comprehend on what basis do the tenebrous ones qualify the sexual alchemists as thieves. And the proof is this. When you read the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 25, the very bottom of that uh, chapter, it is written, and they were both naked. But we put in parentheses the word that they use for naked. If you copy that word and put it in the dictionary, you will see that it has many meanings. And what of the meanings is thievish. And it's because it is precisely what an alchemist, a Templar, the one that knows the mystery of Baphomet does. He steals the sexual force of nature. You have to know how to steal the energy from your own physicality because that physicality, that flesh, is your own body. Matthew Samuel says, or the Genesis says, and they were both Thievish, Adam and his wife, and were not ashamed because they were stealing from their own development, spiritual development. Now the devotees of the path will understand why Christ said, The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Because this is how you develop the forces of heaven within you. The forces of heaven descends in your physicality. And you take it by force, by willpower. It's not easy. The weak succumb in the sexual act. And that's the mystery of Baphomet. You have to be a thief. And that's why the tenebrous, the fornicators from Klipoth accuse the alchemists of being thieves. Because we when we transmute, we are really thieves. We like to steal for God. But it's not a stealing like in this physical world, money or dollars, because that's stupid. It's stealing from his own energy, his own force, his own physicality. And you transmute the sexual force. That's the mystery of Baphomet. That is taught by Moses through his Kabbalah. In all the book of Genesis. When you are in the sexual act, you are touching the tree of life. But remember the commandment, don't eat of it. You touch the, the tree and you eat the fruit and that's precisely the problem. You can touch it. 
But don't eat it. Because by touching it is how you transform the energy and feed your spirit, your soul. But if you eat it, when you fornicate, you make lust and then the rest of egos inside. And you become idolatrous. Even if you don't have in your home statues and you think that only God you worship, but you are a fornicator, you are also a killer. Because you are killing the life. Or as in esotericism we say, any bodhisattva that falls into animal generation is accused of having killed the god Mercury or the Mercurius, which is the sexual energy. What are you performing when you are in fornication? The Zohar explains the different. You are a thief as well, but a bad thief. After the orgasm, of the animals. And the serpent said unto the woman, this is the next uh, graphic, ye shall not surely die, for Elohim doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. But when you eat it, as God or with God, together with God, and you eat it, and then your eyes are open. But it's written that Adam and Eve, or, or whether Eve tasted the fruit, which was the orgasm that they taste, and give it to the brain, and both saw that they were naked completely, without energy, without force. So we have two serpents here. The first is the tempting serpent, and the other is the, the serpent that gives life, which is the Kundalini. Humanity is following, of course, the tempting serpent. Because in the sexual embrace, when the flesh is receiving that magnetism in male and female, they enter into the temple, but to fornicate. And that's precisely to filth the tabernacle of God. Not to eat means to perform the sexual act and to transmute. To eat means to reach the orgasm, the spasm of the animals. Which in this planet Earth, everybody is eating, having a fist of the apple of tree. Right? But uh, you have to be careful. Because in the sexual act, you have to be, if you want to learn, you have to start little by little. Don't start like great uh, master of Tantra, you know, that practice hours. The master uh, with a kosha says, they can endure, can endure for hours, right? But you say, oh, the master with a kosha says, that can endure for hours, but you are not a master. He was a master with a kosha. He said, you have to start. The master Samael says, you have to start for five minutes, 15 minutes, or as much as you can tolerate in order to teach your body because the serpent is wiser. You know, is a wiser animal of all the hayot that were created. So, uh, you said that um, well, it says in, the, in, in Genesis, you shall not touch it. But then you, then you said, we can touch the tree. So which, which one is it? We, touch, we can touch it, we can't touch it, obviously. What Jehovah Elohim said is that you shall not eat of it. Right? And the woman says, not even touch it. Right? But then the serpent, according to Zohar, said, no, no, no. The thing is, you shall not eat. You can touch it. Look, I touch it and I don't die. Mm -hmm. And it's true. Because the Elohim touching and I don't die. But if you eat it, you will die. But uh, and then when Eve said, okay, I will touch it and I will try not to eat it. But she ate it. And gave it to Adam. And they liked the orgasm. He says, oh, this is a good fruit. He says, uh, you forgot about that. This uh, for animals, not for us. And then they are kicked out of eating, etc., etc. We draw before the orgasm. This is the way in order to be born again. Question. Another question. Yes. Um, 
What is the karma of a man or a woman who cannot reach orgasm? The karma. There's no karma there. In this case, for a for a woman that cannot reach the orgasm, why, if you cannot reach the orgasm, you have to fight for it? It says you cannot be an animal because you don't reach the orgasm. Then fight in order to be an animal. That's incon incongruent. In this day and age, is precisely what people receive teachings that uh, some women are difficult to reach the orgasm, so they have to teach her. Women are, in past times, chased by 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 nature. But in this day and age, there's a lot of pornography there and filthy things that teach the woman how to fornicate, how to reach the orgasm, and that's bad. In other words, how to, uh, the woman had to be more bestial as she already is, and how the man can be more bestial as he already is. But uh, remember, the choice is yours. Take the path of the good or the evil. It's up to you. When you are in a sexual act, that is one. And if you pollute the sexual act, you are insulting that only God within you. Thank you very much. Ecstasy or samadhi is not a nebulous state, but a transcendental state of wonderment, which is associated with perfect mental clarity. On one given night, while in profound internal meditation, I abandoned this illusory world of Maya. Thus, liberated from the shackles of this bitter existence, I submerged myself into samadhi within the world of the spirit. There is no better pleasure than feeling oneself as a soul detached from the body, the affections, and the mind. Samuel Ann Weyor My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an independent anthropologist and author. My published books are available on Amazon.com. Kindly check them out if you're interested in the material I cover in these videos. I appreciate all of the Patreon subscribers. And to those who have made a donation to Atlantean Gardens, thank you very much. And to those who contribute their time and effort by sharing these videos, I thank you very much as well. So please leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts, be safe, and I will see you again soon.